We are so excited to say that this podcast is sponsored by Waterman's. We the solicitors? Yeah, but they're not like regular solicitors, obviously. So not super serious and complicated? Yeah, I would say they're a bit more straightforward kind of vibe. Our vibe. Mm, I can get bored with that. For straightforward legal advice, remember Waterman's. The open. Whoa! <laughs> 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 That's amazing. <laughs> Hi guys, happy Chappy Tuesday. We hope you had a gorgeous week. And you missed us? Happy Chappy. Happy Chappy. Where shall we begin? Well, if you're watching, you'll see that we're <laughs> part of a balloon arch at the moment. <laughs> Jessica, Look on, on the wide shot. There's so many. Jessica kindly organised some <laughs> balloons because we're celebrating my birthday early. She's leaving me on my actual birthday week. Which yeah, but when this rude. is out, your birthday is two days afterwards. So it is. So everyone get ready to wish me happy birthday, please. On the 19th. The 19th of September. Do you remember? 21st night of September. September. That reminds me of my birthday, that song. Well, yeah. It's around the same time. Two days apart. Mm-hmm. Should have been the same. What an shape. iconic day to have your birthday, though, and just constantly hear that song. So as a tune. Um, yeah, so we had some lovely balloons made. The business name is A Simple Treasure and her name is Chloe and she's a massive pod pig. So she just came here and you'll have seen the preview at the start of the episode of the big reveal. But yeah, she's put some nice quotes on. You know that way? <laughs> I love it when you say that. You know that way? Or oh, that edgy way. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Quite a key word in my vocabulary. Yeah. And I go to the theatre. Theatre. I'm actually spending my birthday at the theatre. What are you going to say? Burlesque. Oh, yeah. And that's one of my favourite films, so I'm really buzzing about that. I wish Christina Aguilera was actually in it, though. She's not. Slay. We love her. Have you ever seen those two friends on TikTok who dance together? They're kind of like... It's something like... Oh, Brooke. Brooke and... Jenna? Or Jenny, maybe? No. Unsure. But one of them's in Burlesque the Musical. Coming to Glasgow? I don't know if she's touring with it, but she was in it in Manchester or somewhere. Mm. And I thought, that's where TikTok gets you these days. I know, by the way. They are the new age celebrities. They are. Anyway. Anyway. On this week's episode, we've got our A Lot On Your Plates, as always. What have yep. we been up to? All of your questions for Jess. Mama to be. Or Mama to be. <laughs> then we've got A Spit or Swallow. Mm-hmm. And someone also asked us if we can do an outfit breakdown. Ooh, okay, cute. Every ep, so we will start linking our outfits. So should we do that now? Yeah. My jumper is Adenola. Um, I feel like this is the colour of the season. Yeah, love berry. It was the same with last year as well. Yeah, kind of burgundy. Burgundy. Dark berry, cherry. Yeah. Dark red sort mm-hmm. of vibe. Jeans are just H&M. And shoes are Speciales. Trying to see, look at you if there's anything else on your body that we can ask. No. Nothing. Jumper is new season Primani. 17 quid. Thought that was steep. But it's got wool in it. It is a good quality. I will it give is them that. Gorgeous. But I've not washed it yet, so we'll soon see. Um, the leggings are these like fold over ones, you know, the fold over band ones from H&M. Mm-hmm. Trainers are old New Balance. That's it. Style icons. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's it <laughs> I'm not a fashion queen at the moment I don't think I ever have been me? no me <laughs> say speak for yourself you silly bitch I'm joking <laughs> I'm joking I think you're a star queen Wait, right anyway I have, I'm have. i going to go and get you a present <gasps> because you, that's the one thing you failed to mention I'm getting a present guys close your eyes yes Jess has really hyped this up I really have, and I feel like I fucked it. But no, guys, I actually think it deserves the hype. I feel I have no idea what that's so be. lucky. Don't look because it's coming over. My eyes are shut. I feel like I'm so lucky that I got this and snapped it up when I did, because I've had a few of these before, some gifted, and this was not. <laughs> I wish it was, and I am so impressed by this that I urge you all, if you can afford to get this or ask for it, quick. Because it is worth over £1,200. Pardon me? Yes. And I actually examined it fully and it 
absolutely is worth £1,200. It didn't cost me that. Can I open my eyes yet? No! no! I'm going to show the camera first. Which camera should I do, Marika? And if you're actually on um, Patreon, I do a big breakdown of all the, the bits and bobs. Right. Arms out. What the hell? It's big boy. Open. Fucking hell. Is that an advent calendar? <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I don't want to open them and look. Okay, I'm just going to tell you some drawers to open, okay? Just so I can just right. give you a peek okay. of how fucking good this is. I've never had one of these. Can we say what it is? Sorry, we've not said. Sorry, it's the Cult Beauty Advent Calendar. It's their new one that came out like last week. Open door 14. You need to find it. It's all exciting. <gasps> this blew my mind. By the way, it's deep. What the fucking fuck? That is like £250. Augustus Bader. The rich cream. Yeah. I can't wait till December. <laughs> okay, open. Can I not do it for the month of September instead? Yeah. I need to try, I need to okay, try. Okay, open <gasps> number world. 17. What the hell? Sunday Riley CEO Vitamin C. That's one of the best products there ever ever was. More, more, more. Um, what the fuck? Twenty five. Twenty five's got like five things in it. I'm 20, not Twenty five has got one, two, three, four. That's what I will say about this. There's there's about three or four things in each drawer. The two you just opened, obviously not because they're like top. Yeah, twenty one's a big boy. Sixteen's a big boy. Five's a big boy. Twenty one, twenty two. Oh, there's quite a lot of big boys. Twenty four is a good one. Can I find it? Oh, then it's... I don't, oh. I don't want any more. Okay, stop then. Maybe maybe do 12. 12 is a good one. Right, that's the last one. Yeah, okay. I don't know if I can keep this to December. <laughs> Sages away. <gasps> Jisoo oil? Jisoo? Jisoo, is that how you say it? Jisoo oh, you'll love number two. You'll love number two. Right, I'm leaving that. Okay. In that's fact, the best present ever thank you so much that's my absolute pleasure and then that I got was a big treat a birthday card i hope by the time this comes out that this is not sold out because i've seen a few influencers posting about it and they're obviously just as shocked as me because i, I guess wait. they got it for free that money, but that's heavy but i was like i need to get this <gasps> wow i don't know if i can wait i keep thinking yeah, about it you, but that was from uh jess ted's jjf and <laughs> we'll just say a lot on your plate and oh, thank you so much yeehaw Yeehaw, happy birthday. I've got her a cowgirl birthday card. I'm impressed you've not got the price in the back. I got that online. Sorry, I actually pre ordered that. Read it out. <laughs> <laughs> this is a common theme. To Zozo, Zozzy, Sissy, Zozzle, Sissy, Plop, Momager, and Best Friend. That's nice. You missed Auntie. Oh, well. Okay. Happy freaking birthday. 28. Holy moly. Can't believe I'm not even there yet. Can't wait to celebrate properly in Nashville. Yeehaw. <laughs> Yeehaw. <laughs> Hope you love your Prezi, you spoiled little piggy. I'm jealous, to be honest. Love you lots like jelly tots. Because no more vodka shots. Fair fucks. <laughs> Jessica, Richard, Owen, Wilson and baby piglet. <laughs> Aww, spot. Thank you so much. I'll hug you after. Perfect. How cute. I love that. I'm fucking buzzing about that, by the way. I know you would be. I'm going to be glowing. I can't cope. When I was looking through it, because I was doing a little vlog style thing for the Patreon for um, our behind the scenes after the Highway Nick, because I went home and it had arrived. And I was like, perfect. And I was going through it because I hadn't seen the booklet that comes with it. So I was going through it like, you're joking. Like, this is the best thing I've ever seen. Does that give you information about them all? This is every single one, yeah. That's quite good as well, isn't it? Yeah. So you could cheat and have a look, but... Don't suggest I don't you want do. to. It's just as a few months. I know. Ago. I said to you, I don't know if you can wait till December. I don't know either. I will try my best. I can't believe it's got that Augustus gloop <laughs> 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 day cream in it. I'm shook. <laughs> right. Augustus gloop. Augustus, Augustus gloop. gloop. <laughs> oh, thanks so much. That was a gorgeous treat. <laughs> 
when you open them all, I just... <laughs> 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 right it's what should we talk control. about next what's well, been a lot on our plates yeah let's do you because i haven't got anything to give to this conversation well first of all we had our harvey next event on sunday oh yeah guys that was probably up there with one of my favorite events i don't think i really realized it until i got home no i know what you, you know mean. What I mean it was just it was a lovely chilled wholesome sunday morning and it was nice to be in edinburgh i think when I walked into Harvey Nicks, which I'm free to say now, but my head's not really been in the whole event planning malarkey. Yeah. Zoe and Becky, bless their hearts, have been amazing. So when I walked in, I just didn't realise like how good the setup would be. I didn't realise we had a DJ. I didn't realise you got offered like mimosas. And I knew we had a goodie bag, but to be fair, none of us knew what was inside it and we were blown away by that. Yeah. That itself was worth maybe like 50, 60 quid. I think it was about 60 pounds. You added it all mm -hmm. up. Um... Brunch was nice. I just, and obviously our chat was great. Like we didn't plan anything. We just had a very normal podcasty chat, which we've never done at an event before. She was a bit scripted, I'd say. Yeah. We discussed, but before that on the way there, we were like, let's just have a catch up. Chat about the beauty products as well. Yeah, which was Which good. are ones that we always use and love. So that was like Felt authentic, authentic to us, yeah. And not to mention the fact that we were in Harvey Nicks, which is just iconic for us. To I be honest, I think it's a good fit. Like all of you guys, fucking love beauty products. Yeah, so do we. and they actually said to us when they left, like they made so much money on the bar afterwards, which I suppose you wouldn't even think about. But they were like, we are blown away with how much like cocktails and stuff they everybody had at ten a.m. People are loving the cocktails. Like, That's our piggies for you. Yeah. Um. But and then I did my announcement there. Actually, I told everybody at the event on the Sunday before. I announced on Tuesday officially. I wanted to give you guys some time to hear the episode for like the, the morning of the Tuesday. Yeah. And then I shared it on Instagram. Um, but yeah, it was really nice, wasn't it? The reaction. It was. Yeah, everyone was just like, woo! It was lovely. A few gasps <gasps> from the back. But it was lovely. It was a really nice event. I enjoyed it a lot. I was a bit hungover though. And in reflection, I can't remember what I said at any point oh, in that day. I just remember talking about how I was waiting to get my blood pressure shaken so that I could get more of the contraceptive pill. I remember that, actually, yeah. But at the time, Zoe, when we're having the chat, we just forget. <laughs> so if anyone's concerned, if like, I'm going to be with a child, I won't be, but just get that out of your brain. Because <laughs> you were like, I feel like people are going to think I was pregnant after that. I'm like... I don't even remember what you said. I just remember saying it because when I'd said it to you and yours that day, like, oh, by the way, listen, this drama, I can't get more until I get my blood pressure, blah, blah, blah. And you were like, oh. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> so I was kind of trying to tell that story, but to have to do that, I had to obviously give yeah. some personal information. Uh -huh. Anyway, I was a bit hungover because I was at a wedding on Saturday and it was lovely. It was in Row Allen Castle. And where is this? Which is down air direction. Nice. But it was really given Bridgerton vibes. Love. She had, my friend Amy, who was getting married, had strings there, which is what you say. That's the wedding lingo. I want to have strings, which means like a violinist or like a big... A harp player? A harp, like that sort of thing. So she had that for everyone arriving. That's lovely. Yep. And then in the ceremony before she was walking down it was really nice like they both are really into the same music so they kind of like incorporated that throughout the whole day yeah. which was really good and then it was a fucking scorcher of a day the finally some arrived at we the were all sweltering September because before we went in we were outside like out the kind of back of the castle there's a wee bar down there loads of like wee like nice seats um, and then after the ceremony when they were all getting their pictures we sat out there again for a couple hours but it was so nice because you don't really notice the weight yeah when you're like just out enjoying the sun, do you know what I mean? Um, but we were all sweating buckets right enough. My makeup was on the floor. It's a goner. Um, I didn't see your outfit. What did you wear? I had a black maxi dress on, but it was like off the shoulder, kind of like mesh along there. And then it was just black down to kind of mid thigh. And then it was a mesh skirt. Cute. It was quite nice, actually. From I did, ASOS? From ASOS, usual. I did... Um, get some pics I think but I've just I'm quite bad at going back and looking at them now yeah and I forget like to post anything yeah 
That's why I do my monthly roundup on my personal and all, Insta because I just can't be fucked to share anything. And then I think, oh, it'd be nice that. just to share yeah. occasional stuff, but I don't know. Because we've got nice stuff from an event and everything and all. I know. By, by the time you're saying this, maybe I'll have posted something. Yeah, we need to. Um, We're bad like that though, aren't we? I know. Like her, my personal page dies of death. Quite good on stories. Yeah. I think I'm quite good at yeah. that. Um, anyway, then went and had the meal. Meal was delicious. What did you have? I was slagging everyone for ordering soup to start because I was like, you're going to be all so warm. And I got and soup. farting. And farting. And I got soup. I just don't know if that is what I selected, but I wasn't mad about oh, it. Oh, so I, you were slagging everyone and then when it came to them serving you your starter. You me as well. <laughs> you don't know. And the guys were like, oh, unlucky. You know? right. You were like, that's a fart in a bowl. Well, I'll tell you why I don't think I selected it. Actually, now you do it when you are SVP. A lot of the time, I remember looking at that and thinking, farts. Yeah, what was the other option, though? Was it mushrooms or something? It was like in a, a salad thing, I'm sure. Which I think I did. Oh, I don't know. I could be wrong. But I remember looking at the soup and thinking, farts. Also, like, quite a tight <laughs> yeah. dress on. Like, that just makes... Vegetable soup yeah, as well. Farty, floated, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> had the soup and it was fucking gorgeous. So yeah, fine. And then the By main... the way, soup season is coming as well. Buzzing. I love soup season. Oh, no. You need to try and find some nice recipes for you that are without, oh, this is going to be tough, but without onion and without stock, which and is tough. lentils, I think. Yeah. I don't know. I think onion might be my problem. Yes. And I do love onions. So that's a bit of a shame. Gravy sets me off and I think it's the stock in there. I think it, because spaghetti bolognese sets me off, right? Yeah. And Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> And I put... A stock cube in that, a beef stock cube, and I put onions in it, but I also put garlic in it, and I think all three of them together, you're fucked. They are like IBS triggers though, aren't they? Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> main was a sort of beef, oh, I wouldn't know the right word, but it was kind of in like a round, it wasn't bat battered or anything, it was just the beef, Yeah. but it kind of looked all together, but as soon as you touch it, it was like all breaking away, like so... Like pulled and tender. Yeah. It was so nice. I had a kind of pepper nice. corn sauce on it. Slow cook. Yeah. And it had dolphin wa. What a great wedding menu, by the way. It was really good. Dessert was sticky toffee pudding or lemon tart. It'd be quite nice to know, actually, what all of our listeners had at their weddings because... I usually feel a little bit let down when I go to some and it's very traditional, like the chicken and the veg and the potatoes. The one I yeah. just went to recently that I said, they had a more of like an al fresco style dining of where it was just loads of like fresh salmon fillets in foil. Then came like a big bowl of like new potatoes in a sauce. So you could kind of choose at your table. And then the beef like you're describing, that came. A big bowl of like green beans, salad. It was a bread. It was just like a very... I think Do you know what nice. I'm trying to say? Yeah. Like a style of outside dining but. You're not going up to a buffet, but you've got options at your table. Yeah, yeah it was like that. That's nice, actually. And then the dessert was like three different options, like a profitable lemon cheesecake or something. Do you know what I mean? Like a yeah. bit of each. I do think it is difficult because you're obviously having to cater for a lot of people as well. So there's reasoning behind why it's limited options. But I'm just not a massive like chicken breast lover. So a lot of the time it is like chicken balmoral. Yeah. Like, but I do love a chicken balmoral though. A bit dry sometimes. Anyway, Did you do that thing that you do at Scottish weddings, that dance at the end? Well, I wasn't there right until then. Ah. What's um, that called again? A Kaylee. A Kaylee. I don't remember one. I think Bex did one at hers, but I can't remember. You do the Gay my, Gordons and you do that? I think that was my first experience of a... Do, 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 is it a Scottish Kaylee or a Glasgow Kaylee? Scottish Kaylee. So what do you do? You just dance, like... No shit. <laughs> ballroom <laughs> dancing but not as fancy oh I thought it was like a bit of a mosh pit where you shove people in the middle and it's like Wee! and you've like thrown up in the air and that I think you're just thinking about when you sang Lock Lomond at the end that is that is what I'm thinking of oh right I thought you were thinking of like a Kaylee where you all dance like hand in hand with oh no I'm thinking of the thing that they do at the very end of a wedding right we all stand round and we lock arms like that and you do that right and then eventually yeah the, the bride and groom just go in the middle and then all like the wedding party jump in and then everyone jumps in and then they lift them up and that's just that's just everyone being fucking nuts that's i what? can't i've not been to a wedding that's done that then that's i don't know if that's tradi tradition i think that's just us being uh, unhinged we love it to be honest yeah um yeah jason came and picked me up at half ten because obviously we had the event the next day so i sadly wasn't at then but i did see a picture of her in the air so it was a success. Perfect. Um, and yeah, there was a live singer during the meal. He was great. Yes. And then there was a DJ at night. 
Right. Perfect. Just a nice mix. That's what you want, isn't it? So it wasn't a band, though, it was just a singer. A singer and yeah. a DJ. Um, it was kind of good sort of party vibes. The speeches were great. Like yeah. the, the best men were funny. And then her two maid of honours did a speech, but it was actually a, a poem. No. So Zoe told me this in the car and she <laughs> said that bastard word that you will say that I can't take seriously. Poem. And they read out a poem and I was like, Zoe, <laughs> stop right That's there. That's just the way it is, right? Uh, but it was poem. such a good poem. You sound much better saying poem. I know, I'll, I'll fix that. <laughs> um, but I was really impressed. Like, it was, it obviously rhymed Sorry. as it needs to, but it was like touching, it was funny. Yeah. It actually, they spoke, like, even things that I know that Amy's all, like, Amy, one of her pals, love Taylor Swift, but not too much. <laughs> but they just end up in a tradition of going to see her in different countries. But it's something they always do, which is quite nice. And, like, that was involved. Like, you know, like, just things that yeah. you know about people. Cute. So it was actually really nice. But, yeah, that was kind of... Your weekend. My weekend. Yeah. And then we got absolutely spoiled at Harvey Nichols as well, didn't we? We we really did. We got spoiled and then we went to St. James Quarter. Yes. God, my, my memory is so bad at the moment. Yeah, so we did. We went to... Wingstop. Have we got our candle on? Uh, no, because of the balloons, but it is over Fine. there. But we've got a dip tea candle and amber. It's beautiful. We treated, we treated ourselves to the studio for that, so you can see it in all its glory next week. But we also went to Wingstop. Yep. And guys, I've I've got a fascination with fried chicken at the moment, and I thought I need to have it because I saw it on TikTok. There's a girl on TikTok called Crip and Dip. I don't know if anyone follows her, but she's amazing. She lives in London, and she just basically does mukbangs. Right. But not in a way where it's like all sloppy. She just sits in a kitchen. She makes stuff as well. She makes a lot of stuff, especially Asian food. She loves that. But she'll have like a hungover takeaway mm -hmm. to her and her boyfriend. And she had a wing stop and it looked a joke. And I thought, God, I've never actually had that. My sister and my dad tell me it's great because they have it down south. And there's one in St. James Quarter. And you told me there's one now in St. Enoch's. I think so. There definitely has one somewhere, but I I've never had it either. So I was reading all the TikTok, com TikTok comments. Like, I, if I'm going, I'm getting the best of the best. Like, what's the you most must. popular? And they said that the Louisiana rub was the best with the chicken tenders dipped in the Blue Ranch dip or the... No, blue cheese and the ranch dip. Yeah. There was, and then there was like a honey mustard dip as well, but I didn't really like that one that much. And then we had the Cajun fries. They were nice. They were, they were really spicy. They were roast and hot. But that Louisiana rub... Fuck me, so good, wasn't it? Yeah, that was really nice. I even liked the sweet potato fries; like they did the job. Oh yeah, they were nice as well. I had the coleslaw, didn't rate. Um, was there something else we had? No, that was that it. was it. Two fries. What was it? Coleslaw. Yeah, it was a honey mustard slaw. Choice. I thought it would be a bit more mayo-y, but it was dry. It looked dry. Yeah, not it. But I can't wait just to get to Nashville. We're going to have all the fried chicken. So many people have sent us Rex, so we're going to go and try them all. Halley bees or something? Hattie bees. Canny mind. And then I'm going to go to LA and have in and out Burger, lose my mm. in and out virginity. I can't wait. A lot of good food coming up. I'm in my junk food era. And Fear that Fox. is okay. Slay mama. Slay mama. Slay mama. Have you been up to anything else? No. <laughs> Fuck all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stressed that this just might be the only chat I've got going forward, but I'll make sure it's not. I'm feeling more human now. It's absolutely not. You're going to LA next week. Yeah. We've Nashville. got loads coming up. Then we've got Bits and Bobs after that. It's your birthday. You've got different plans here and there. I'm actually super excited for me and you to go and record in Nashville because I just think me and you have never really been like on location with a lot on your plate. No, and I not. think that next week's going to be our first ever Zoom call. So Zoe is going to Zoom me in LA. We're going to try and work out the time difference. And we need to speak to the guys to try and get good sound quality. But I'm sure it'll be fine because loads of podcasts do it. Yeah, we'll work out. So it'll be nice because Zoe can catch up with what she's done on her birthday. Yep. I can speak to her about what I've done in LA because I've been there for a good few days by that point. And we should maybe try and not text one another so we can actually have a Zoom catch up. I mean, we want much anyway with the time difference and all that. True. But you better still say happy birthday. Of course you do not. Of course I do not. I want like a paragraph. Of just how much I love you. Yeah. Okay. And then Nashville, we're going to have a proper, like, we're going to go somewhere and record. Well, it will still all be on camera, by the way, um, somehow. And that'll be nice because we'll catch you up. And then over on Patreon that week, we've decided to do 
a more of a style like mukbang eat with us and our friends yeah in our amazing airbnb which we'll give you a tour of so I think that's going to be so fun. I'm going to get everyone to say like three facts about themselves. Yeah. And then we're going to pick a couple of dilemmas that week and get us all like all a girly friends. chat. Yeah. Like, what's the word? Dissect it. You'll get to meet the famous Molly, who we talk about a lot. Heather, who we talk about a lot. And our friend Hayley as well. I am a bit concerned about bringing Molly on because people might prefer her. <laughs> they love her. She's no, she'll be nuts. shy. Molly will be camera shy. She better not be. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for that. So if you are over on Patreon, if you'd like to join us, then that's the sort of stuff we have coming up, which we want to just do a little bit more of a different mix of content. Yeah, keep it exciting. Yeah. Buying your own house and flat can be so stressful. So stressful. And I feel like as adults, we're just supposed to know all this stuff. Did you know that it's considered one of the most stressful things you can ever do in your life? I can believe that, by the way. All the paperwork, lawyers and all that. It's too much. It's a total minefield. Well, don't worry, I have a solution that will make everything feel easier. Ooh. Just let our sponsors, Waterman's, handle it all. Will they pack my boxes too? Not quite, Lizzie. <laughs> but they'll definitely take care of everything else. Well, shall we get into it? I guess. I popped a little question box on the stories for you lot to ask Jess hmm. questions on her journey so far. Mum to be journey. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're just going to chat through them perfect you ready can I just say before we begin I would like to say a massive thank you actually um, from the bottom of my heart just uh, like how incredibly kind everyone was to me yesterday when I posted about it um, I actually was very blown away Zoe was going through my message this morning on, on that was on just, just Jess wasn't it yeah I didn't get it to the end and you were like looking at me like oh it's my god Constant. dms like the, and then the comments um messages on a lot and you play on my personal page and of course patreon i forgot patreon. about patreon there's comments on the video there's in the, the group chat was popping off and youtube there was even comments and stuff on YouTube. like i was just overwhelmed i felt like i was on my phone all day yesterday and i am completely grateful of how kind and supportive people are from afar and it's wild to me to think that so many people that don't actually know you are so touched and happy care. for you and like that they genuinely care yeah yeah i can't explain how many people sent their well wishes to me richard and zoe like <laughs> they were so cute i've decided that richard's actually just a sperm donor in this situation he is we were actually talking earlier that zoe might just come in the delivery room <laughs> 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 Someone asked if so I'll be in the delivery room and I sent it to Jess like was that even a question? And I was like, Do you actually want to? <laughs> I will be on hand. I know you'll be in the hospital you could to be. Can be. Somebody messaged like, Can Zoe vlog it? <laughs> like, well yeah. <laughs> what that sort of view will be hideous. <laughs> I'm not really that squeamish though. Like I'm you know, I'm quite weird, quite like yeah. like gory stuff. Yeah. So if Richard's like a bit of a fainter or anything, I'll just I can step in at any time. Yes. I'll be available. He'll probably but like your support you, there, to be I'll fair. I'll allow you the moment. And obviously you'll have to deal with my mother. A lot of people can't wait to see my mum's um, reaction. reaction. And by the time this comes out, that's the reason I shared it on the story is because I do intend to share those videos with you all this week. Um, So you'll have, you'll have already watched them by now. And I know for a fact you all cried because I cannot watch the video of my mum without absolutely fall into pieces it's the that is the best like it's everyone will understand instantly and she what was, you're expecting it's better yeah like i was had sleepless nights over it and i do think that it was so worth the weight of me telling her to her face because you might have gathered from the videos that i was adamant of telling people to the face so and i'm obviously a lot of my family live down south but it was just brilliant and with the timing of wanting to tell them once i'd had like scans and stuff yeah yeah, it was wonderful. And she was the only person I cried when I told them. Like, I was, I broke down. You can't really see it in the video, but I was really crying. My mum and dad, I don't think they ever thought that they would become grandparents. I think a lot of people thought that. I know, and the questions kind of stopped, I would say, in the last year, do you think? Because they listened to episode two, season one of the podcast, that's why. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like... She made a snide comment. She made a comment about it on the the episode she came on yeah you remember but i think they'd kind of maybe just decided to maybe accept it yeah 
as I'm my mum's only daughter and my dad's eldest daughter, but there's a big age gap between my younger ones. So, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, just want to say a big thank you. I really appreciate it. So does Zoe. And it just goes to show how amazing community you all are. It was lovely. I mean, I even got a couple of messages directly to me. It was perfect. Loved it. <laughs> I was like, thanks for noticing my involvement in all this. <laughs> Kidding on. Um, so how far along were you when you found out? Five weeks. The big five? Yeah, I would say five. And what, like, how did you find out? What was the, what made you think it? What made you do a test? When did you do that? Why? Any symptoms? So aside from the fact that I was being quite good and tracking my ovulation, because I really wanted to do the fertility test, so yeah. I was always tracking it because you had to do it three days after your period or something. So I was really tracking it quite mm -hmm. well. Um, so I would say I was around three or four days late. But what was throwing me off was the fact that I had all the symptoms of a period. So I had the cramp, I had really sore boobs. Um, but what I will say is I was exceptionally tired, more so than not. Mm -hmm. And with the whole fitness journey I've been on for, a, I don't know, like a year, um, it seemed strange to me that I just wasn't full of energy anymore. Um, I knew something was wrong. As you know, if you heard from season four, I, I was getting tests. I was also getting a really sharp pain down in my lower left abdomen. Yeah. Which actually I found out now is not related. I thought it was a cyst on my ovary, like flaring up. I went to Belfast for Father's Day, mm -hmm. if you remember. Um, I don't know if we were recording at that point. When's that? Mid June? Yeah. I so. so I went to Belfast with my dad. So the Friday we all went out. It was a lot of Guinness, baby Guinness. Um, and I was tired, but I felt fine. So I, I was drinking. The next morning, the Saturday, so I finished the night with the pizza, pepperoni pizza to be precise, because God, it'll fucking haunt me till the day I die. And I was just not feeling myself. I felt sick. In the night, I kept waking up. And I'm not, you know this, I'm not a sicky person. No. When I'm hungover at all. I can really hold it in. And then I woke up and I just projectile vomited everywhere. Uh, in the toilet and I was like what the fuck all oh, the pepperoni came up and it was making me feel uh, so sick went back to bed felt instantly better then I woke up again and sat chatting to Kelly and then all of a sudden it came out again um it was just really strange for me I was like this is so unlike me yeah and then anyway oh, we had a late flight that night um and I think it started to I started to think I'm, I'm not sure that this is normal yeah I think I could be pregnant. And also, just to point out, not once in that, what, sort of two-week period, would you say? Two yeah. or three weeks that you'd felt like that? Did we ever say that? Never. We never, never mentioned it once. It. It's crazy. Which is weird from us. No. No, I honestly That's didn't. a subconscious thing. Even though like, I knew about the danger shag. I know. I just forgot. Yeah. I forgot. I don't know. And anyway... And like I say, I never thought it happened for me either. So um, ruled that out. And then I just, okay, so the Saturday came and we were meant to go out again because my dad and uncle and my cousin, when we're together, we're big boozers, like we love it. <laughs> and I was not in the mood. We went to the Titanic Museum and I still remember the Saturday walking around thinking I had to go and sit down on a chair every given moment. Mm. I couldn't take it in. And they were like, God, your hangover's really bad. And I was like, you didn't even drink that much. And I didn't really in the grand scheme of things. And I thought, yeah. I, I'm tired. Went back to the Airbnb at around 4 p.m. I said to them, I'm going to have to go and have a quick nap before we go back out. Mm -hmm. And I didn't wake up again until the next morning, until 9 a.m. They just left me. <gasps> and they blessed them all. They just stayed in and watched, like, I think uh, Love Island was on at the time. So they just watched that and other films and stuff. They probably had a great time. Yeah, I don't know. And then I do feel bad because I do think my dad at the time probably thought Jess is not herself. But now he knows he didn't get it. All makes top sense of the world. Now, so it's fine. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's how I found out. Yeah. I think it was the Monday morning. I think I'd asked you how you were feeling, or was it was was it when you were at the airport? Yeah. No, I think when you were at the airport, you said how you were still feeling like that. Then the Monday morning, I think I asked you again, and you text me, and it was like five things. <laughs> and I put them into Google because I knew exactly what it was going to tell me. And I know Google tells you you could say I've got a headache and it'll say you could be pregnant, right? Yeah. But it was just basically what you text me is what exactly what it said on google and i was like yeah i think it's time we take a test <laughs> and then i went to get my nails done 
a new te- you knew I was getting my nails done. I did, yeah. And I got a text saying, where are you? Mm-hmm. And I glanced at it. And I was still getting them done. And I knew. And did like, you? That you'd done it. Because you wouldn't have asked me where I was. You knew where I was. I think you needed to know exactly where I was at that point. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I didn't want to tell you because I didn't want you to... Not that I knew you would say anything because I knew you were with Kirsty, but I wanted to tell you when you were alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I get that. But, yeah, so I went in the morning, I woke up and I, I went for a walk with Rich and he was like, why don't you just t- get take a test now? I was like, I'm too scared. I'm not going into that chemist. <laughs> I'm going into my local chemist. You crazy? And he was like, well, I bloody will. So, yeah, he got me two tests and, yeah, we did it together. Because <laughs> I think a few people thought that you didn't do it together because you'd said he, he then had to go to work, but that was after. Yeah, I, I said in last week's episode that he, I didn't know what to do at that point, but he, we did test together and I'll obviously keep that moment between us. But... Then he had to go to work. So then I was alone then. And that that's point. when I came. Yeah. And I texted you and you were like, I'll be there in 20. And so I, I sat there like that on the sofa like, you know that fox, <laughs> that meme fox? <laughs> <laughs> so they're like, fuck, 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 fuck. I could not get there fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> and bless you, you'd gone and got me another test. Yeah, I went into the the one just round from you as well. And they were nowhere to be fucking seen, right? And I'm looking about like, if I need to ask for this. And that's just so stupid, isn't it? Yeah. Like, no one in there knows who you are. And also, it's not a bad thing. Mm-hmm. Like, but it's just, I don't know, you just feel like a wee girl still when you do stuff like that. Yeah. Like, and I, I, there was a young boy working and I had to ask him and he, you could tell he, he was felt nervous. more awkward than me. And I was like, hi, hi, excuse me, um, <laughs> did you get any pregnancy tests? And then he was pure showing me all the options and I was like, I don't fucking know, just <laughs> give me any. any. So then I brought you that and it, instant. <laughs> it was, and I said that to Zoe the first, because I did two the first time. The line was so dark and so instant. <laughs> oh my God. I did it again with you and I was like, told you. A lot of questions on how did you know it was the right time? Where are you planning? Like you've said a few times, like you can't imagine waking up one day and thinking, oh, today is the day sort of thing. We need to address that. <laughs> of course. No, I totally understand that. Um... The reality is, guys, like, I'm not a maternal person. No. I never have been. I'm unsure if I ever will be. I was never somebody that pictured a family of four in my perfect family home with a big white wedding dress. Like, I'm just not, I'm just not that person. And that is okay. Like, there are so many people out there that are in the same position as me that question their, like, question if this is what they want if they can see that for themselves, if it's weird because I think a lot of people are confu- felt confused with me, Richard and I because we are so in love and it is a really good relationship mm-hmm. and it's been so long, but yeah. none of these traditional quote milestones have happened for us. And that is just by choice. Um, and I just want people to understand, like if you do feel like I did, that it is okay to feel that way. We shouldn't have to feel pressured from society to no. be that person or that someone that craves children. And then it, if we change our mind, that is also okay. Yeah. And I was never, ever going to be somebody that would sit there and say to Richard, seriously, shall we try? I, and that is why I wanted to do that test. And, and Richard felt the same. It was a very mutual thing. You don't want the choice to be taken away. Yeah. Sort of thing. So I was debating and going to go down that route. But, you know, I've got friends around me that are in their 40s that are having children and I guess that is all purely down to society pressure that I felt. Mm -hmm. I'd be lying to you if I said I hadn't felt that in the past. And people saying to me like, oh, your clock's ticking. Like, fuck off. And I think that this is what's made me strongly believe that everything happens for a reason. Because yes, at the time, it didn't align with what I'd booked and the things that I planned. This was like my bucket list year. But... Seriously, I cannot explain to you how different I feel now I'm pregnant and far, so far into it. Yes, the start of it was confusing oh, and it sure. took me a lot to get my head around yeah. with the hormones. But now I know this is, like, I really want this now. And I, yeah. And I think I'd be devastated if anything happened, of course. But it just, 
I can't explain it. Like, I, there's something just changes in you. It's weird. I don't know. <laughs> it's so and it, weird. Everyone who's been through it does say that. And you just can't. It's not that you don't believe them, but you can't imagine it until you do it. Too. Yeah. Like, obviously, I've had a few people message me, and it, and it comes from a good place. But, God, I never thought I'd see the day. or, And I get it. But I've never point blank sat here and said... I don't want kids. I yeah. haven't on the podcast anyway. I've in a roundabout way said I can't see them in my life. I don't know how parents do it. And I still strongly stand by it. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I am terrified that I will not be the best I can possibly be. You will be though. Everyone is when it, get, when it gets to that. But the amount of messages that have come in that have said things to me like I was in your position. They had no expectations. It came on them as a surprise. And it was the best thing that they've ever done. I think for me... That was the only way it would happen for my journey and my story. Yeah. And I'm so glad it's happened this way because I worry that if I had this hadn't happened, it probably would never would. No, I know exactly. So I guess the kind of answer is you weren't trying and you didn't wake up and say, this is the right time, it just happened. No. And that doesn't and mean... And now you're glad it And it I did. want people to know that that is okay. Absolutely. what the balloon says. Absolutely. fucking um, So yeah, I just... And I think what you've also got to understand is like at this time and we'll go into a little bit of like symptoms of anxiety and stuff that I've been feeling but an imposter syndrome is something that I suffer from professionally personally as well and I have done majorly in this but like I'm I don't take a second for granted that this um has come pretty easy for me in the sense of yeah. like I wasn't actively trying um, and I know a lot of people out there really struggle mm -hmm. and I'm beyond grateful for that. And I, yeah. my heart goes out to people that listen to this podcast that might be trying to conceive or going through facility issues because now that I'm in it, I can truly understand like how much you'd probably want it. No, and that's fair enough. Fair enough. Are you going to find out the sex? No. Gutted. We're all gutted over here. But do you know what, fair fox, it's the only surprise you'll ever get. No, what is it? You the only say? thing you can't Google. The only thing you can't Google. There you go. I'll be honest, I, we were going to find out. Yeah. Um, and then I went home and some friends said, please don't. It'll be the best thing you ever do. Um, so we're sticking to it. No, I do think that's the right decision. I just wanted to know what colour trainers to buy, but we can wait. Unisex, anyway. No, I know. Fine. I said to Zoe, like, even if it was a boy or girl, I don't want loads of pink and blue shit anyway. No, I know. Obviously, I like a dress, but... we bits and bobs. It would be very neutral. Like, we're not getting, like, an all-blue wardrobe. No. Going. I know, exactly. I, no, I think you're doing the right thing. It's just long. It's just long, right? But how nice for you, though, to know another surprise. No, I know. Because a lot of people did want the video of you telling me, but, guys, see we're best pal. That's not how it goes. I know. I That's, know. It's more get over here right now. yes <laughs> we've got like talks to be had oh yeah i know a lot of people have been asking about your reaction haven't they it was still quite good oh zoe like i couldn't have done this without you no way like when she came over that day i was as i said like in all sorts of emotions and you really really had a very calm conversation with me. I wasn't losing my shit or anything, of course no. not, but it, I was very much thinking of every scenario possible. Yeah. And you were like, right, what are we doing then? Like, yeah. how are we moving forward? You can do it, you're fine. And I couldn't, I've hon honestly done it without you, so thank you. That's nice, shall we touch? Yeah. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> or he's like, whoa. <laughs> you're a great amateur, do you want to touch? Um, <laughs> So, a bit about highlights so far, lowest points <clears throat> so far. Maybe give us one of each. Lowest, maybe, was the morning after. So, you found out one day the next morning? Yeah. We're at the next morning, right? Um, I wouldn't say low is maybe the right word, because I obviously felt happy. Most kind of like overwhelmed. Yeah. Like. I was very like, you know, that moment when you open your eyes and you realize something. Yeah. And I was like, whoa. Because you have to remember, I was feeling so shit for those two weeks. And that, that hadn't gone just because I'd found out I was pregnant. True. So I woke up like with crazy hormones. And I would say that the realization of a few things one, my body is going to change. Yeah. I was really not prepared for that. Um, I felt like I'd been on such a fitness journey that I was trying to not lose really a bit of weight yeah yeah which i don't care now 
but I'm trying to go back to how I felt at the time. Yeah. Um, two, I'm not, I haven't got any family here. So mm -hmm. I was worried, like my, ch my child will not grow up around their grandparents. And that was a massive thing for me. I haven't got any family up in Scotland. So yep. that for me was like, I don't know, just daunting, I think. You've got family by choice, but not by blood. That's it. Scotland, okay. And I suppose you do think of those things, but at the time you think of every scenario and I really want my child to be part of my parents' life and yep. everyone, and, and that's sad, but I know it's doable. Three was finances. So Richard and I are both self-employed. I wasn't feeling great. And as you know now, I didn't expect to feel so crap for so long mm -hmm. where I am out of action for work. Yeah. So, you know, you go, you have my emails, Zoe sees jobs come in and I honestly was like, I can't do it. I don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. It feel authentic to me because I'm not feeling good. Yeah. And yeah, so that is something I took into consideration, maybe more so once I had the baby. Never even thought about how I'd feel pregnant. Yeah. It's a lot at once. So then I was like, oh my God, will I still want to work? Will I still, will I want to post my child online? Do I want to become like somebody that shares mum things on the internet? Mm -hmm. Because if I'm being totally honest with you, I have never been able to relate or consumed motherly con mum blogger content. Mm -hmm. I feel so far removed uh, from from that yeah so and I, and I know that's normal because I'm not a mum but I really worried that I didn't want it to become a whole personality you know yeah online especially I don't want to lose what I've built yeah and that's fair yeah and I, I and I stick by it now but at the time I was thinking these things yeah like what route to go down and yeah what does this mean for this and what does it mean for that Can Richard take time off will he we'll be able to go and do things together like is the is the house big enough or God, there's, there's loads of things that you think about. Well, that's another question. Do you have to move? House? No. And I want to. Yeah. I can't afford it. There's, there's no nothing out there. there. There's nothing out there. Nothing out there for what I want anyway. Yeah. Um. But I actually got the sister method over two days ago because I text them like, girls, help. Bless them, they came straight over and they were like, I said, listen, I need to rejig. I need to make a baby. I need to make a nursery. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lol. Um, get rid of like my walk-in wardrobe room, whatever it is, spare room. And I'm going to have to make my bed, our bedroom more of a, like a wa put a wardrobe in there. Because mm -hmm. at the moment, I know you don't know my house, guys, but it's just like a bed and two sets of drawers. It's very minimal and that's how I like it. Yeah. But realistically, I'm going to have to just make that and make a nurse a nursery or something. I need more storage. Got plenty of space in your bedroom though. Everything yeah. can move up and then a wardrobe go in. Yeah. Like I need a store I need that storage. So, yeah. I'm I'm ground floor. Um there's a gardeny shed bit. I've got gorgeous, lovely, kind neighbours who are over the moon for me and Rich. Yeah. Um couldn't ask for better neighbours to be honest. And I think it's actually a really lovely place for a child to grow up for oh, some time. Shame it's next perfect. to a really rowdy pub, but I'll be fucking marching over there at midnight, let me tell you that. The room's at the back as well, so you'll yeah, be so true. fine. Yeah. And it's actually, a, it's a big room for a baby. It's massive. That'll be a playroom and everything. Yeah. The kitchen's just small. Small. Which isn't ideal, but yeah. But apart from that, great space. Yeah. And highlights so far? I would say the highlight for me was week seven very specific yeah when i went for a scan an early scan um just before i went to san sebastian right, which yeah. i wanted to know for sure um and then seeing i mean it was a tiny little kidney bean at that point on the screen but seeing a heartbeat flicker and you're with richard and you're holding each other's hand like we just looked at each other and pissed ourselves i was just going to say tell them the reaction <laughs> get it out we there. just pissed ourselves but in a like while we're looking at each other laughing like you're kind tears of, like, in your shock. eyes yeah no it's a in a nice way like yeah i can't believe <laughs> i can't believe that's how that's, that's gonna be a kid like what <laughs> what um and that for me then was like oh my god because i suppose at that point you don't even know what's how going things on are, don't no. you? i know and and sadly, because the internet can be a dark place if you look for it, I was looking at stories of things and I was getting myself so worked up, wasn't I? I was anxious yeah. for a long, long time. Like, aside from that morning after, the, another dark, not dark, that sounds deep, but another difficult time I've experienced this yeah. whole journey is the 
anxiousness, health anxiousness. I think if I see feel anything, I'm like something's wrong. Yeah, Get, I've <laughs> I've spent two hundred and fifty quid almost on private scans. <laughs> you honestly, I can't imagine anyone who doesn't feel maybe that. not that much. One hundred and fifty. Yeah, like I just think everyone will be in the same boat. See until it's at that point where you can feel kicks and all that. How are you supposed to know if everything's okay yeah. down there? And I'm not feeling anything yet. I felt like a little tap, but maybe that was just a big old fart just a bit of wind <laughs> <looking> about <laughs> yeah the symptoms guys are bunny 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 so weird funny. weird weird stuff yeah i'll read a few out to you because i know we're running out of time but i'll read i'll shall, shall i do that yeah do a couple of symptoms oh the only other question i was going to ask you was um do you have names but you're not going to tell us that anyway i do have one girl name that we both love and boys name one one name I was always going to have my, was my baby boy name my whole life. Yeah. Um, but you know when you say something so much, you're a bit over it. Mm. And it's quite common now. And then there's one name that you suggested, which sounds very similar to the name that was the name that I wanted. And it's lovely. And also it's some a member of Richard's family, so it means something nice. I think that's a good one. I'm having a boy, guys. It's obvious, isn't it? Like, I'm just going to put I it out there. I don't know. I don't know. I'm a boy mum. I would love a girl though. I did think you were a boy mum, but I can't decide now. I can picture it both. It's a difficult one. <laughs> anyway, tell us a couple of weird things. Right, okay. Week two to four was the groggy feeling in the stomach. I thought it was like IBS, which I yeah. said. Um, feeling tired and very emotional. I forgot about that, the emotional one. And tender boobies. Felt rock hard. My first breakdown was in San Sebastian, which was week seven, actually, when I felt so chubby, bloated, nothing fit me. And I had a freak, I freaked out to Rich, like, how do I look like this already? Like, what am I going to be know, like? You text me that at the time as well. I was really upset. And he was like, stop crying. I was like, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> um, week five to six, I found out here, woke up feeling instantly sick, looked bloated all the time. And I'd gained a stone in... From when I, when I last weighed myself, I was a stone heavier. Oh, I, it, you were kind of heavy at that point. Didn't didn't it didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. However, I then lost an awful lot of weight. I, lo I lost like another 10 pounds yeah. in the two weeks after. So if anyone's listened to this and you're going through that sort of stage, everyone kept saying to me, it's just bloating, it's just bloating. Well, the couple of people that knew at this point anyway. I didn't believe them. But it, but it was. Mm. Don't get me wrong, the belly probably never went anywhere, but it kind of went a bit more rock solid as opposed to like... More of like a shape, not... Yeah. Like jiggly. <laughs> and the thing that I noticed the first was I found it really hard to breathe. Like I was really out of breath. Oh, you might yeah. have heard this maybe on this or in videos I post on Instagram, but I am gasping for air when I speak, even now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got a few things like shooting pains in my boobs, really bad farts, like so bad. <laughs> I didn't get it. I was like, what are these farts all about? And they must be really bad. If I, mine bad, yeah. Well, it's unusually bad. Okay, and this bit's quite deep. Um, then I started feeling, so this was week six. I started feeling quite mixed emotions about the news at this point now. Mm -hmm. I was struggling to come to terms with a new life ahead of me and I was getting really snappy at Richard um, mm -hmm. for like a week. I had a feeling of slight hate towards him and resentment. Resentment. And looking back now, that's crazy. But I was looking at him thinking, your, your life's not going to change. Yeah. And mine is. For the next nine months anyway. I just know a flood of messages are going to come in and say people felt like that. Really? Because even as someone who's not went through it, I can, I, like, it's in black and white why you would feel that way. Yeah. Because everything happens to you as the female. Yeah. And even, like, not meaning to be disrespectful. Pissing off to the gym and that, and I'm like, it was just like, can't bear you. <laughs> what's wrong? Like, it, it can't be that bad. Like, you know, just typical things. And it's like, but you're not experiencing yeah. it. And even a guy doesn't know how a woman feels month to month with her yeah. hormones anyway, never mind that. I don't think you'll mind me sharing this part with you because we have we do laugh about it now. But when we were in San Sebastian, I was huffing and puffing, sitting on like the seaside, like the seaside, the wall near the sea, eating a cheesecake. And I was like, I feel so shit. And he was like, um, oh, but babe, like you're only just pregnant. I lost my fucking shit. <laughs> that boy 
God bless him. We were laughing when I said it because he was laughing thinking, oh no, I didn't mean it like that. Yeah, but instantly wish you could take it back. I was giving him a full-blown education on the first trimester. <laughs> I, I can't explain it to you guys. Like any of your friends out there that are going through this now, please, if they, if you know anyway, reach out to them because it is the hardest time mm. in that first trimester. Like n mental. Um, and then another big thing for me that I'm still experiencing now is my gums. I'm, I'm, my gums are bleeding. It's like a massacre every morning. My gums are fucked. They're swollen. They look sore. Um, the smells, I, I smell, even my own breath in the morning makes me want to be sick. Um, I can smell everything, the fridge. But constipation started then. Mm. Um, crave, craving started then. God, it's a bloody roller coaster. And it? the amount you pee is a joke i was up every 10 20 minutes in the night at one point for about oh, two no. weeks pissing full bladder pee like where are you coming from yeah like, where where does i'm drinking that from? much water can't drink tap water either i can smell every chemical in it it's disgusting <laughs> um and then yeah sorry so then the last bit not least thing the nipples hurt me a bit but the imposter syndrome i would say like the feeling of this is kind of all too good to be true yeah. Something's wrong. How have I got such a nice person in my life? I've got a roof over my head, like lovely people around me. Like some, I, I'm not deserving of this. But you are deserving of it. I, know, but I don't believe I am. Even though I know I am, it's hard to explain. I've been like... That's it, just important. You know, I'm like it just, just as well. Like I yeah. struggle so much with thinking like... Good this things is just all, happen. This is all just too... This is just all too good to be true. And something's going to happen. And, and it's weird to think that because I'm such a positive person. But I really do struggle with that, actually. Yeah. I mean, it is a, it's a proper thing. Yeah. I think as well when you've got that mix with kind of general anxiety, if everything's okay, blah, blah, blah. Like they're just kind of bouncing off each other. Yeah. It's like back to front of when you feel good about it, you then start to think, am I deserving of it being this good? But yeah. And you feel bad about it. You wish you could feel good about it. Yeah. So it's just... You're just going to experience that the whole way through, but it'll be all worth it in the end. Let's hope. I'm asking your advice here so you can give it me. Um, if anyone can uh, send me things for like a good pregnancy pillow or anything. That when you got to get one of those balls because I want a shot. You can't bounce on them apparently. You can only move on them until the very end. Ooh. Ooh, can't I'll go bounce. on top, Richard, anymore. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I did watch that. Shame. I know. Boo hoo. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. Anything, any sort of vitamins that you took um the only thing i'm taking at the moment is collagen i'm still taking that because i've heard it's really good for skin elasticity well I'm, i take that anyway but yeah i've kept that up um not that i'm too crazy about stretch marks because my whole fucking body's covered in them but i don't have them on my stomach so it'd be really nice to maybe not have them yeah but i get it it's the beauty of it so nice. if it happens it happens sorry blabby well, blabby hope that answered loads of your questions i really enjoyed that it was cute going through the journey again yeah and we'll be speaking about it more any other questions in future episodes of course but well too much <laughs> why don't we leave our spit or swallow for the patreon yeah let's do it we can do it on the patreon this week and then if you want to hear more of us you can join us on friday over there go gina well thanks so much for listening thanks for telling everyone your journey jessica happy to share gorgeous just don't send any unwanted opinions. We'll just repeat that one more time. Unwanted Everyone's opinions. Everyone's been really good, actually. You know what they've said? I'll end on this. The one piece of advice that I've took on board that people have messaged me is, the best advice I can give you is to not listen to any advice. It's your own journey. Make fucking drop. Boom. See ya. Okay, bye. Bye. bye.